Here I want to do some trend analysis, but I want to do it on something very specific, product profit margins. I want to see through time or in any space of time, did margins expand or contract? This is really relevant uh, if you were wanting to look over the last, say, two to three months at a particular set of products and you wanted to say, well, are we selling our products appropriately? Are we, exp are we expanding our margins as, as expected? Or has demand dropped off or competition is high and our margins are actually contracting? So here's a, here's a technique that you can use to actually, uh, to actually discover that uh, and visualize it in Power BI. So first of all, we have, have to actually get to profit margins, the profit margins calculation. So in the current data model, we have just sales transactions and we're gonna start with total sales, but then we wanna also get total profits. So to get to total profits, I'm just going to quickly draw that up for us. I'm gonna to go to total sales and then I'm gonna minus, in this case, uh, total costs. And I'm just gonna to go to sum X and then quantity times uh, total unit costs. Okay, great, now we have total profits, but now we actually we wanna get total profit margin. So I'm just gonna add another measure and I'm gonna go profit, profit margins here. And we have all, everything we need to make this happen. So I'm gonna go divide total profits by total sales and then enter. And now we've got our profit margins. Let's just make sure that this is formatted correctly. So I'll just put a one to one decimal point. And to prove that this is right, and because we're gonna actually look over this uh, on a quarterly basis, so I'm just gonna grab my quarter and year, and then I'm gonna drag my profit margins inside there. Okay, so we've got our profit margins here. The one thing to note is that we wanna actually uh, look at a condensed time frame. I'm just gonna get rid of the first three quarters here. Okay, so. We've got our profit margins here, but now we want to we want to see that profit margin growth, and we want to actually see it per product. So first of all, we have to work out what the logic is, and then we can pass that into the correct context to get the answer that we want. In this case, we've got this 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 com this quarter's profit margin, but we want to evaluate it versus last quarter's profit margin. So I'm going to create a new measure, and I'm going to go uh, profit margin. Uh, Profit growth, I'm going to call it. And I'm going to go profit margins. And then I'm going to go minus calculate profit margins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the profit margins using date add from the quarter before. So I'm going to go date add, and then I can then just put it in your date, and then minus one, and then my interval is quarter. So it's going back one, minus uh, one quarter. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us the growth or the change rather. Uh, in this case, the same thing. So I'm just going to make make sure this is a decimal point. And if I drag the profit growth in here inside the table, you'll now see that we are reflecting just the growth, whether it's expanding or contracting. So a minus is obviously contracting and a positive expanding. So that's pretty cool, right? But now, now we want to see from a product specific perspective what the profit growth is. We've got the logic in there. All we have to do now is change the context. So I'm just gonna create a matrix and then I'm going to get rid of the profit margins here and I'm gonna go and find my uh, my relevant dimension which is, uh, which is product name in this case. And I'm gonna put this up into the rows and switch the quarter and year into the columns. So check it out. Now we have the profit margin growth or expansion or contraction on each of these quarters. So now we can actually identify trends. Was it, was it, were they expanding or contracting? And so I'm gonna go conditional formatting and I'm going to, you may have seen another video very similar to this, um, but this is just such a great technique, we're gonna do it again. And I'm just going to conditionally format these these cells basically in this table and we can see now all the trends if there's some uh, expansion or contraction so that in itself is pretty good insight and certainly if you overlaid this on some real world 
uh, information, not some, some, in this case it's quite randomized, so we're not identifying trends as much as we can, but if there was a reduction in demand and uh, or there was in increased competition, you would see a lot of reds in a particular row. And that would be cause for concern, something to discuss and, and, and try and take action on. But in this case, what I wanna do is I actually wanna see, well, uh, within any quarter, why did it? Why, what, or within uh, any time, any of these time frames, and we're, we'll, we'll narrow it down to just the, the last three in this case, but why, why did it expand or contract? Let's go and look at, uh, let's try and drill into why it, it actually happened. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm just gonna copy and paste this table and I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get rid of, in this case, the quarter and year. No, actually, I want the quarter and year here. I'm gonna get, get rid of the product name and then I'm gonna turn this into a visualization. And now we can see just from a quarterly basis, well, what actually happened to the portfolio in its entirety. But then what I also wanna do is I want to look at the products and see, well, what actually happened to each different product. So we can quickly see well, what was contributing to the, the growth in margins or detracting from it. So I'm just gonna change the color here. And then the last thing I wanna do, well, I wanna see what were the actual individual transactions because that's the level that we can go to. We can start with a summary layer, we'll try and discover, well, is there a trend? But then we can actually look at the underlying data and see well, what specific things, what specific customers uh, have caused it or what specific sales to in specific regions have caused it. So we can really, really um, drill into that information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table with uh, some information from a range of our tables in our model. And I can put our sales and profits in here. Okay, so now that we have all of this aligned, what we can do is we can say, okay, let's jump into say, well, we were, we were, our profit growth was down here. So in, in, in Q3, so I'm gonna select that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, filter that properly. So our profits margins contracted by almost 1%. Now if we look through this table here, I can see, well, it was for a range of different reasons, product 14, product five. So then I can look at product 14, I can come find product 14 and product five here. And if I select on product 14, we probably actually wanna put the date in here as well. I can then look at every single individual transaction for product 14, and I can look at them on whatever date, I can see who, uh, which region they sold to, and so on and so forth. These are the sort of amazing insights that we can get now with Power BI, and, and this is just one uh, example of you know, a really um, interesting and uh, compelling way that you can actually discover uh, these insights, which can you know, generate a lot of value, especially to discussions within organizations. Okay, good luck with this. Any questions, um, just feel free to put them in the chat below and, and I'll get back to them uh, as soon as I can. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.